I'm joined now on the Thursday interview by probably Britain's leading musical theatre star. It is Michael Ball. Michael, thank you so much for joining us on... Great pleasure, really great pleasure. What I'd like to talk about, because we're going to see in Cork in December, and yeah. more about that and none, but, but what I'd like to talk about, how you got to this, this part, point in your life of such extraordinary success, because it, it didn't really look that way as a kid, did it? No, no. I didn't kind of know what I was going to do. I, but I'd always been, I'd always loved music. I'd loved, uh, luckily my parents were really into, um, and enjoyed going to the theatre, and so they took me along uh, to see plays and shows from an early age. And I, I think I always sort of enjoyed getting up and performing, being in school plays and so on, but making that leap into doing it as a profession was, was a bit of an accident, and only happened because there was nothing else for me to do. Yeah, of course, born in the Midlands, um, and probably half the population of the Midlands around the time you were born was working in car factories. Yeah, that's where my dad worked. Exactly. Yeah. But, but he, he sort of struck it rich. He became quite successful. Yeah, he? well, he wanted to be an actor, and his parents said, no, that's not a, a job for a real person. And they, they were, my, my, my granddad had a, a small, um, uh, car franchise down in Bridgewater in the in the uh, south of, of of England. So he went to be an Austin apprentice um, and kind of worked his way up because of his love of acting, I think, and performing. He uh, gave a big speech to uh, uh, for the, for the, on the last day of all the apprentices uh, dinner, and we put into the marketing department and ended up being responsible for the launch of the Mini, the new Mini that came out. And so he, he got involved, I guess, in kind of industrial theatre. And we always think about new cars and so on with big glamorous launches and, and all of that. And that was what he started doing. So young Michael Ball would have been living pretty comfortably. Oh, right? yeah, for sure. Oh. I, 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 mean, I mean, I can't pretend I starved in a garret. I really can't. But, you, you know, my, I was sent away to boarding school. Um, my father worked in, in South Africa for, for a while, and, and at the time they thought boarding school, you know, was the best thing to go for me. And it was kind of a, the, the worst. It was, a, it was a hideous experience for me. I hated it. And, um, uh, you know, but, 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 but I can't pretend we struggled financially at all. No, we didn't. Well, it's interesting you hate your boarding school, because mm. I'm sure I would have. Yeah. Uh, but happily, I didn't go to boarding school. I'm, um, I think everybody has a close relationship with one or other parent, particularly mm. close one. I, I'm always ready to confess, I'm a mother's boy. Oh, um, you. Now, your mum was Welsh, your dad yeah. was English, which probably causes your problem on, on certain occasions. But it, I, when, when it comes you, to war and rugby, I'm a Welshman. <laughs> <laughs> but in relation to mum and dad, I mean, yeah. were, you, were you particularly closer to one or other, or were one or other more supportive of the idea you got on the stage? Or what? Um, do you know what? No. My dad loved the idea. Once I, I decided what I wanted to do, that, uh, that I wanted to go and study at, at the drama school and, and try to make uh, a living for myself uh, on stage, he was totally supportive. I think what he didn't and he worried about was was me kind of drifting and, and not having a focus, not having um, any aims in life. And I think every parent feels yeah. that, don't they? As soon as, uh, as as a kid shows, first of all, a bit of aptitude, and then actually a motivation to get into something, then then d d their job is to support it. And, and they were absolutely supportive, both of them. But, of course, you were living just down the road from Stratford and Avon. Yeah. So, I mean, you must have got theatre from quite early in your life, anyway. You know, absolutely. I remember going when I was 13, I think, um, and he's since become a very good friend. Sir Donald Sindon was doing King Lear at uh, uh, Stratford, and I went to see this production. It was directed by Trevor Nunn, who subsequently directed me and Les Mis. And it was the most extraordinary production. Judy Dench was in it. Michael Williams was in it. It was an, an amazing production. And it, 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 it absolutely inspired me. It made me realize the power of, of, of theater. Um, and, you know, for a kid to be enjoying King Lear is kind of unusual. 
I, I would think. You know, I you're would. normally terrified of, <laughs> of, of Shakespeare because it, it's badly taught in schools. But this made it really live and really immediate for me. Well, it says something about our two backgrounds here and growing up. Young Michael Ball goes to see Donald Sindon in King Lear and is moved. And George Hook goes to see Donald Sindon in the great funny film series of the Doctor series. With <laughs> <Dirk Hooker. laughs> so we had, we had interesting starts in life in our relationship with yeah. Donald Sindon. And, and he's now, I'm now a member, uh, a director of the Royal Theatrical Fund, a charity, which he's, he's just finished being president of. And we, I'm going to a celebratory lunch with him tomorrow. And he's become a, a, a good friend. And he's a real inspiration. He's a lovely man. Now, my guest on the Thursday interview is musical theatre star Michael Ball. Michael, uh, getting a little bit personal, I, looking at you these days mm. in, in pictures and stuff, were you a chubby little boy? <laughs> I, yeah, I think, I think as soon as I learned that to be... Do you know, I'll tell you exactly what happened. I used to find solace in food when I was at boarding school. I was, I was miserable there. I wasn't sporty. And I used to come home uh, on holidays. And, you know, th th there were no friends around because I was... Uh, uh, this sounds like a sob story. But this is true. This is what I, I, I've sort of analysed. This is where my relationship with food happened. And I did. I used to eat. And um, so I was. I was a chubby boy and not a sporty boy. Uh, then, um, but and I, don't, and I enjoy my food, and I enjoy my wine, and um, I have periods where you know my weight fluctuates up and down. But I think everyone does that, don't they? Well, uh, <laughs> I must have been like you because uh, I was—I uh, wasn't a chubby little boy. I just became a chubby adult. <laughs> <laughs> it's so easy to, isn't it? Yeah. I just I, I, when I did, uh, I did a show called Hairspray. And uh, w w uh, which, which uh, we did over in in, uh, in Dublin and had a, the most fabulous time there. Uh, but I had to play this very large, overweight, agrophobic mother of one <laughs> from Baltimore, and so it gave me a, an absolute uh, uh, license to eat as much. They said you've got to be big, so it gave me a license to eat as much as I wanted, and then. It's losing it is the hard part. Now, um, they, they, when you decided what you want to do, you, yes. you got accepted to the Guildford School of yes. Drama and got, a, got, a, got, got funding to boot. Mm -hmm. It is interesting, though, for me, that you went to school to learn to act, mm. but you never went to school to learn to sing. No. Why was that? It I, I, I didn't occur to me, to be honest. I, I thought that I wanted, to, and I did, I wanted to be an actor. And also I felt that I had, um, I, 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 all, all, everything I've approached, all, all the music I, uh, uh, I do and, and that I sing and when I'm on stage, I approach from an actor's point of view. I've never studied the voice. I've never had singing lessons. It's, it's always been about an instinct for music, the same as a, an actor's instinct. Um, and it never occurred to me. It, 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 it was just fortune that the first jobs I got were through musical theatre. Because it is, I do love musicals. I absolutely love them. I think they're, they're, uh, they're everything the theatre is about um, when they're done properly. So I, I, was, I was really blessed. Now, um, on, on that question of singing, though, if you, you didn't go to school to sing, mm. you, you, you must have listened to records or something. So there, oh, had gosh, to be, yeah. there had to be one or more singers that not so much you modeled yourself on, but, but that you would, have, you would have seen, you know, I'd like to be like that, no? I, yeah, I, I actually made a, uh, an album, the last album, which contained the music of my heroes, and, and, and they vary. They're the obvious choices, the... the, the the great singers, uh, singer performers of Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr., Tony Bennett, um, of that kind of ilk. Uh, and then moving, you know, becoming more. Well, I also like rock and roll, and my music taste was different, but the way I learned to sing was by singing along with those people and with those records. Um, and and uh, the, the great female singers as well, people like uh, Ella Fitzgerald, Billie Holiday, Barbara Streisand, great great vocalists who knew knew how to tell a story. 
Now, my guest on the Thursday interview is Michael Ball, uh, and Michael is going to be in Cork in December. Tell me about that, Michael. I'm so excited. I haven't been in Cork performing since I did Sunset Boulevard there uh, at the Cork Opera House with, with Petula Clark. We performed there. Uh, and I've been given the, uh, the great honour of being asked to perform with the Cork Youth, Youth Orchestra. Uh, and we're going to be there on the 8th and the 9th of December at um, the City Hall in Cork. And this, uh, my, my mate Colm Wilkinson performed with them last year and had the most amazing time. This is a, a big orchestra filled with the, uh, the musical stars of the future, isn't it? The, old, the, the, the classical musicians of the future. And uh, I was given a call, asked if I'd like to, to put a concert together with them. Uh, and I absolutely jumped at the chance. And we're going to do things, a lot of things from, from musical theatre, because I think they, they suit this big orchestral sound, and some Christmas stuff as well, because it'll be nearly Christmas. So uh, I'm really looking forward to getting back to Cork. And, uh, well, you're going to love it. I know. Um, yeah, did, just... you did, you did, it, did you do it last year? <laughs> Say, George, did you do it? It makes it sound as if I warbled or something. <laughs> <laughs> I, like <laughs> all I had to do was just introduce um, uh, Colin Wilkinson. Yeah. Now, your sort of big break came in Les Mays, yes, Les Marius. Was, was Colin in that? Oh, that yeah, we were in the original cast together. Wow. Yeah. He used to carry me. Uh, he used to have to carry me round the stage every night on his back, and I'm a big fella, and he would be swearing at me under his breath. Yeah, big fat bonner. Yeah, he's carrying me round. He actually blames me for ruining his back. <laughs> Now, you'll enjoy it. There'll be about seven or 800 people in the City Hall both nights. It'll be a sellout because you're a big ticket. Uh, and, you, and you've got, you're right, you've got some of the best yeah. uh, young musical talent in Ireland with the Cork Youth Orchestra. So if people haven't got a ticket, uh, it should be, they're in sale this week, so should, they should be heading off to buy them. Now, one of the things I was really interested about is you get really scared, or at least you used to. Yeah. And I would think that never actually goes away. No, it doesn't. What you have to do is learn to deal with it, learn to channel it, learn the, the, the warning signs. Um, uh, uh, I used to suffer terribly during the lame time with panic attacks. Um, and uh, once you've had them, you know that you're capable of having them, and that always leaves you feeling fairly vulnerable. Um, but it, what you have to understand, I think, and I, I, when I tell people when they, when they suffer from this, is that it's a natural reaction to have adrenaline coursing through your body when you're about to perform in front of a, a crowd. It's, it's a natural thing. Um, and to use the, those, those feelings in a positive way. And also to understand... I always say this to myself before I go out in front of an audience, that the audience is out there because they want to be there and they want to, you to succeed and they want you to, to give a good performance and that's why they've come. They haven't come to, to be negative. Well, not all of them anyway. Um, so you have to... Yeah, it's, it's, it's a case of mind over matter with these things. And um, I have, learned, have got better. It still, it still happens. You still... You know, it, it creeps up on you, those, those, those anxiety attacks, they do creep up on you, but uh, you have to, as I say, know the warning signs and, and, and know how to, to trigger better thoughts <laughs> so, yeah. so, that, so that you don't uh, go off into a full-blown panic attack. On, on have you ever suffered, George? You know what I mean? <laughs> Have I, have I what? Listen, you've met your brother. When we're in Cork, we talk about it. When you say, I know the signs, yeah. then by God, do I know the signs. So I, I, when I was listening to you, I was thinking, oh, yeah, I know what he means. Well, this is it. Everyone who's, who's actually had them, who's been through these feelings, knows exactly what I'm talking about. And some people just look at me like I'm, look at me like I'm mad and really don't know and don't understand. And that's great for them. If, if, if they haven't felt that, that sort of paralysis and that, that panic, then, then they're blessed and they're lucky. But if you have, you know that it's, it's a horrible feeling. Can I get a little personal? Yeah. You, you've got a girlfriend. Well, <laughs> she 
we'd love to be called that. We, Kathy and I, we've been partners for 20, oh my goodness, 20 mm. years. I was going to say, when were you going to make an honest woman of her? She's as honest as she needs to be. <laughs> <laughs> but how important, um, because getting a part, uh, oh. men, it's not just a cliche about a woman behind a successful oh, no. man. We, we do need their, their, their sort of calmness and their ability to look at something that we react to emotionally, Absolutely. and they react calmly. Is that what she does for you? <laughs> And, and vice versa. She can also get me motivated when I'm not. Uh, and she'll see things and go, do you know what, this, this would be great for you to do. Uh, or see things and say, do you know what, you mustn't do this. Um, yeah. And, but the most important thing, I think, that, that Kath brings to me is a grounding and, and uh, a leveling and, and a home. You know, it's, all, it's, all, it, it's great going off and doing lovely work and so on, but you need to come home. You need to have a family. Uh, to do it for and to feel part of and, and to switch off with. Be because, of course, Cathy, I can remember Cathy McGowan at Ready, Steady, Go. Oh, yeah. So she understands also the kind of pressure you're under. She absolutely. But has absolutely no interest in being, you know, she, she stopped work doing that as soon as she could. She's got no interest in being famous and... and, and uh, having her face everywhere, because she's been there. She's been, you know, like baked beans. She's been everywhere. Everyone knew her. Uh, so she, she understands those pressures, and she understands how transitory it is and how, hmm. you know... Speaking, Michael, of transitory, because my guest is Michael Ball, I, I often wonder, because obviously, you know, you, you're making money and you've got tucks of it locked away in a vault somewhere. Oh, well, I and wish. How, how are you with money? I mean, are you good with money? Or... Terrible. Are you? Terrible. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I never plan ahead. Um, in, in good times, the money gets spent, and in bad times, I have to try and find the tax. Uh, and it always catches the best advice I can give to anyone in this business is save, because you, you, it, it's feast or famine. You know, you could be riding high one minute and earning great money, and the next you turn around and you have a period without work and you have loads of, you know, have all the expenses of living. Listen, we're all, we all go through it. And um, you, you, people think that this is, a, that if you're in the public eye and that, that you're on, you know, you're uh, uh, famous and, and seem to be working and successful, but you're earning truckloads. And it's just not the case, you know. The area I've gone into in, in theatre and so on is not particularly well paid. I'm fine, though. I <laughs> mean, don't worry. But, uh, uh, no, I think it's a misconception right. that, that, that it you might have truckloads. Yeah, it, it was remiss of me, though, when talking about Cathy. She did rather um, pull you out of a hole, as it were. On no, one she of pulled the... me out of a fire. Yeah. What yeah. happened? Our house burnt down. We had an electrical fault three days before Christmas. And... Um, if she hadn't woken up and dragged myself and the dog and torn out of the house, I don't think I'd be here. It was uh, it was a it was a horrendous thing, um, and I lost I lost a lot of stuff. I lost uh, books and pictures and videos and and, and memorabilia because it started in my office, and I really realised that that stuff means nothing. Unless you, you know, you, the priorities are, are the living things, are the, are the people. All right. Well, look, Michael Ball, you should bring Cathy McGowan with you to Cork. She'll love it. Yeah. Um, and I know um, Cork people have a great musical tradition going all the way back. I mean, you, for instance, your love of Gilbert and Sullivan. Uh, Cork had a, has a thriving interest in Gilbert and Sullivan. So you're going to have... I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. There was a wonderful uh, Gilbert and Sullivan actor-singer called James N. Healy back in the 50s. Mm. 
and, and Cork has this great tradition, you'll have an appreciative and very knowledgeable audience. Um, it, you're going to enjoy it. Colin Wilkinson did last year, and you will. Uh, the people of Cork will be looking forward to it. Tickets on sale um, now this week for the Cork Youth Orchestra behind uh, my guest on the Thursday interview, Michael Ball. Michael, thank you so much for your time, and look forward to seeing you in December. Can't wait, George. God bless.